Hey everyone, welcome to College Cooking with the Bite Nights. I'm Henry. And I'm Regin. We know that cooking in college can be very stressful, especially if you're on a budget or on a time constraint. But hopefully we can show you some tips and recipes that you can use as a student and for the rest of your life. We're joined by our guest, Megan, from Fresh U. Thanks for having me. So my name is Megan. Um, I'm the Nutrition and Outreach Coordinator for Wellness and Health Promotion Services, and we have a program called Fresh U. You look excellent. Thank you. And your apron's too good. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about some knife skills, and most people at home don't have gloves to work with, but I don't really care for the smell of onions, so I'm going to wear some. When you're cooking at home for the first time, you don't have all of the utensils to do. So we're gonna do the best we can with what we have, always, right? So we might make modifications depending upon what you have. Um, but we are using chef knives today, and so what we wanna do is take our thumb and our forefinger of our dominant hand, so if you're right-handed, your right hand, left-handed, your left hand, and put it on the top of the blade, not the bottom. That would be bad. And then you're right. gonna wrap the rest of your fingers around the knife, and that gives you a nice firm grip on the knife. You can hold your knife like this if you want, All right. but we prefer you not hold it like this. So our onion and our zucchini, they're both hard vegetables and they can kind of get away from you on the cutting board. So what you want to do is get a really nice flat surface. So we're just going to, not the root end, but the opposite end, get a nice flat surface. And then we're going to take our knife and cut in the middle of the root end. The root end is what's holding all of the vegetable together. Uh, and if we cut off the root end and let the, our, our vegetable would fall apart. Yeah. So I made that mistake that yesterday. And, and it's okay if you do, you want to know why? Because <laughs> it's still edible. But this is also great too because you can pull off your, your skin too and it still doesn't come apart. Is there an easier way to do this? No. <laughs> Um, so, uh, no, truly, sorry, that was I was just messing with you. Sorry, Regin. So if you look at kind of the inside, it's much easier to find the layer that you're trying to get off mm -hmm. if you use a fingernail or something like that. So we're gonna make nice little slices of our onion here. All right, and you see your guide hand is back here kind of holding the onion together, but not in the way, right? So why don't you try that? Still going opposite. Op yep, yeah, still opposite from the root end. I think I did it wrong. <laughs> you can't do it wrong, it's still edible. That's okay, you did great. So once you have them all nice and cut, we wanna be careful we don't stack too many layers on top of each other. And depending upon how thick your layers are, layers meaning this, okay. um, it's just good to cut them one at a time. So we're gonna take our guide hand this time and make a C, so that that way if I'm chopping along, showing off all of my new knife skills, right? Yeah. and accidentally slip, I don't hurt my finger because it would run up against a knuckle. And at this point, we're gonna keep the tip of our cutting board or knife on the cutting board, and we're just going to make nice, and we're gonna feed with our guide hand, so our knife shouldn't move, only our guide hand in the vegetable under the knife. So kind of like a rolling motion? Yep, like a rolling, yep, like that. Give it a shot. How do you feel about it? All right. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. It. It's challenging. But. Yeah. After a while, you kind of get used to it, and your muscle memory gets used to it, and it just kind of works for you. So now we're going to work on dealing with raw meat and cooking it and making sure we cook it to the correct temperature and we don't cross contaminate. The only thing worse than getting food poisoning is giving it to yourself, right? Yeah. So we're going to try really hard to make sure we don't do that in our own kitchen. So as you saw before, we did all of our veggies first, and now we're gonna focus on our meat. Now that we have our meat on here, we're gonna be very careful about what we touch after we've touched it, and we're of course gonna wash our hands when we're through. Take a look at our chicken breast is what we have here, and cut off any um, fat that you see. Your fat is gonna be these darker pieces right here, like this, and then your non-fatty pieces are gonna be of that more kind of transparent pink color, right? So let's talk about properly thawing your meat too. So if you have chicken in the freezer, the best way to thaw it will be in the refrigerator. It usually takes about 36 hours for it to thaw completely. If you start to cook it before it's completely thawed, it's gonna cook unevenly and maybe burn on the outside, but not be done on the inside. Have you done it any other way? Yeah. 
How so? <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the microwave once. You put it in the microwave? Okay, yeah. on the defrost or just the microwave? Just stuck it in there. Okay, all right. That's a tactic. That's one way. Any other way? Always terrible. <laughs> but I get a bowl of. When I really need to cook chicken, okay. I get a bowl of hot water. Okay. And then I put okay. my chicken in there. All right. Yeah. So that's this is a safe place. <laughs> you can tell me about these things. We did it wrong. There's no judgment. Oh, no, 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 no. So when you are gonna thaw in water, what you want to do is thaw in cold water, oh. right? And don't let it sit out for too long. Okay. So for example, if you put it in the freezer to the fridge and it's not done, you can thaw in water and cook it. If you're gonna thaw it on the defrost setting, preferably. Um, when you thaw it those ways, you should consume all of the meat product once it's cooked mm -hmm. and not store it for later. If you want to have leftovers, then you should thaw it the appropriate way. Right. And I know you're thinking, <laughs> but I've done that and I did not get and sick. And I survived. Right. <laughs> but then next time, you could make yourself sick. The amount of bacteria growth on the product when you're thawing them that way just increases more so than if you were to thaw it in the fridge. Even after cooking it, you still can't. Store Even it. after cooking it. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Didn't know that. That's good enough. Got to change my ways. You learned something. <laughs> You've got all of your fat off of your chicken breast. So what we're gonna do now is place our chicken breasts on our pan here. You can use a um, foil covered pan. If you put foil on it, though, you should spray it with some nonstick spray. And, or you can put some parchment paper on it if you do that, you don't need. There's several different ways we can season, but as we kind of go along and you all learn new recipes and things like that, we'll be doing that. Today we're just gonna cook it. All right. Do you wanna put it in the oven for me? Sure. Do we need to oh, wash before? Yes, we should wash our hands. So if you guys wanna step over and wash your hands. Okay, so now that we've washed our hands, we're going to um, be very careful about what we touch, of course. And we're gonna cook chicken at about 375 for about 25 minutes or so. It really just depends on how thick the chicken is. Chicken, we tend to cook at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time because it doesn't dry out if you cook it for a shorter period of time at a higher temperature, okay? So when we are temping, do either of you own one of these? I do not. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna talk about how you know if chicken is done if you don't have one of these. But first, let's go ahead and temp it. For chicken, we want 165 degrees in the middle of. So I'm gonna go ahead in the thickest part of the chicken, all right? So as you can see, our chicken is done and ready to be eaten, right? So if you don't have a thermometer, what would you think we would do? Make sure it's not pink inside. That's a good Cut question. it in good. half, maybe? Cut it in half, yeah, we're, so we're gonna cut it in the hottest part, right? So we don't want it to be pink inside and we don't want the juice to be pink, <laughs> okay? And not too terribly chewy. And that's how you know it's done. So today we learned how to properly hold a knife and cut vegetables and of course our meat products. We learned kitchen safety, how to properly temp our meat products and thaw them. Um, how do you feel about the skills we talked about today? I feel great. I feel much safer using a knife now. Excellent. Yeah, I feel very confident with defrosting my meat products safely. Well, thanks for coming in, Megan. Well, thank you all for having me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more college cooking videos with the Bite Nights. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and share this video with your friends. Once again, we're the Bite Nights. I'm Henry. And I'm Regin. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! I see you in